So let's see what it means. Basically, when we're talking about identifying association rules, you talk typically about a certain set of items. Let's take a retail scenario. So to make that to make our task simpler. What we talked about is we talk about a set of items that are being bought. So let I1, I2, I10 be the set of items that have been bought. Then one particular transaction, maybe one shopping trip to the retail store or one e-commerce shopping cart, which is basically a collection of items you bought. That's a transaction. Then we talk about a whole set of transactions, which is the transaction database, which is your feed for your identification of patterns. Then, so what we say that a transaction basically, you know, is a collection of uh, items and uh, we discover an association rule of the type X implies Y, where X and Y both are what is known as item sets, which is collection of items, disjoint sets, means they're not having any common item. Typically, what we mean by this is something which goes like this. If all items in the set X are part of a transaction, we will also have the items of the type Y in the same transaction. That's what association rule implies. So what is X and Y? Each one is an item set, which is a collection of items. If you have bounded the size of the item set to a size K, that is known as a K item set. And typically a K item set is an item set with K items. Let's say you're talking about a three item set, then we talk something with say milk, cereal, bread, for example. It's a collection of three items. So let's be very clear. We're talking about a set of retail items being bought. We're talking about a particular transaction being a collection of items being bought in one go a transaction database being collection of all such transactions. Then we talk about an item set being just a plain collection of items. And an association rule is basically of the type one item set implying another item set, which means that if customers have bought the first item set of items in the first set, they are very highly likely or they are highly likely to buy the items in the second item set. So it's more like highly likely because that's what it gives you. Because from the history in the past transactions which you have in the transaction database, it has been shown that that is the case. That's what we're discovering the rules. So how do you, you know, so if you want to go ahead and discover such combinations uh, depending upon the size K, you may come across, uh, you know, probably in millions of records, you may get hundreds of thousands of such combinations. So how do you restrict which are the ones which make sense to you? That's where we try to define two different metrics. These are very important metrics from our perspective. We talk about support and confidence. So very simple support means if you're talking about x implies y the first set implying second set you take the union of x and y and see what is the percentage of the transactions in the total transaction database which support both which contain both x and y or x union y so basically it is a indication of my association rule is talking about support percentage of the whole uh, you know whole database this could be we can talk about something like it may not be if you are talking about millions of records it's very di difficult to say that we'll have 
transactions supporting X in Y, uh, something like 90%. It's very difficult. So, for example, if you're doing retail transactions, and if you talk of milk, bread, and uh, cereal, it's possible that they represent something like 10% of the transactions of this. It need not be like something which is very, very high, like 90%, because it is very rarely that you have in a, such a diversified buying pattern, you will get a very, very small uh, set of transaction items here. And uh, so it's not very fair to expect support to be very high. But once you have chosen the support percentage, which is that, okay, this 10% of the retail transactions are talking about bread, cereal, milk, which is both on X and Y together. Then I would say there is a percentage which we need to talk about, which is the confidence. So what we mean by confidence is if you talk about X implies Y, what percentage of X also contain Y? Means if you talk about X, uh, uh, you talked about support already, which is saying that out of 10% of the transactions is what you're referring to, which is containing bread, milk, cereal. But suppose you're talking about uh, bread and milk uh, implies cereal, right? So you take the set of transactions which have bread and milk. Then out of that, confidence is something which says which also have cereal. So it is more like the confidence within the left-hand side uh, set of transactions, how much percentage of them also contain the right hand side. So here we definitely expect confidence to be very high. Confidence should be in the range of 90%, 85%, 95% because that's where you try to get the localized behavior analysis of the subset of the transactions which you already kind of filtered with the support argument. So Association rule, as we said, is typically applicable in scenarios with not so high support, but very high confidence. Reason is the number of transactions you work with is huge. If you look at call data records in uh, telco, it is huge number of transactions. Or you talk of e-commerce transactions, you talk about millions and millions of transactions. Out of that, Maybe 5%, maybe 10% of transactions are what you're talking about, which is the support. Then you go to confidence. That's where you say that within the bread and milk, I would say 95% of them should actually have a cereal also. So let's take this example, very simple illustrative example. Let's take the transactions to be consisting of, say, that bread, jelly, peanut butter is one, bread, peanut butter, bread, milk, peanut butter, beer, bread, beer, milk. Now, if you say take a rule, let's take a rule like beer implies bread. We find that beer is present in two out of the beer implies bread, right? So beer and bread together occur in one out of five transactions. So we talk about 20% as the support. Very simple, right? Only one out of five records have both. Now let us look at uh, within that how many person if suppose in the number of transactions which have beer which is two out of five how many has bread also that's one out of two that is why it is 50 percent so what we need to understand is support in this case is basically uh, one out of five, but for the percentage of transactions which have beer, we find that 50% of them is associated with the rule beer implies bread. Same way we can look at jelly implies peanut butter. So as you can see, jelly is there in only one transaction. So it is one out of five. So jelly and peanut butter together are there only in one transaction. Whereas out of jelly, which is present in uh, 
only one transaction which is t1 peanut butter is also present in that so that is 100 percent so this is is this clear very simple intuitive saying that what is the percentage of transaction which support all the transactions all the variables you worried about and then within the left hand side variable what percentage of them have the right hand side variable also so this is a very naive way of discovering pattern so but it is the beauty of this is it is simple but it is very powerful because this is so relevant in all the fields which we mentioned crime detection healthcare diagnostics see what happens when support is high see what typically uh, support is high is okay see it's not like uh, it is a bad thing but if you're talking about all transactions which are related to your breakfast purchases only and within that you try to do bread and milk and cereal I'm sure your support will be very high so it does not mean much it's only about that when you work with support you typically because you work with a large database you're not necessarily interested in a very generic rule which has somehow something like 50 items on left side or 50 items on the right side a rule like that that means suppose it covers 100% or 90% of all the transactions. It does not give you any insight. It does not give you any meaningful insight which you can act upon. That's why when you talk about insight, it's about pointed rule, <coughs> very specialized pattern. That's why it. this is not coming from the patterns uh, you know item set size it is coming from the tra database transactions which you work on if the transaction database is typically very huge they call data records retail transaction over a year so these are very very huge variety huge number of items different combinations of items so that is why it is very important for us to understand that we should have reasonable percentage of transaction on which we talk about but we should not make it very high because if we increase the size of the item sets we talk about the meaning of insight is lost what is the meaningful action you can take based on that these are 50 variable plus 50 variable. that's why this combination of you know support with uh, high confidence is very important Support is something which you talk about a slice of the data on which you are very keen on. 